I'm going to tell you how Spider-Man came into being. It's, it's a true story, although sometimes it's hard even for me to believe it. But um, we had already done the Fantastic Four and I think maybe the X-Men, I can't remember the order, but my publisher came to me and he said, Stan, I want you to come up with another superhero. So I said, okay, and I went home and when my publisher said do something, I'd better do it because I wanted to keep my job. I thought, what can I come up with now? And the most important thing in a superhero at first is the superpower. Once you get that, everything else comes along. So I thought, what power will I give a new guy? And I saw a fly crawling on the wall. And I said, hey, if I could get a superhero that could stick to walls and crawl on them, man, that would be cool. And th no, I'm lying to you. I don't think the word cool was in use then. I, prob I probably said it'll be groovy. <laughs> I'll never lie to you. So I thought that was good. Now I needed a name. So I said, well, let's see. Fly Man, Mosquito Man. I got down to Spider Man. Spider Man. It just sounded dramatic. So OK, I had my hero. I had his power, his name. And then I figured, just for fun, I'm going to give him personal problems. Because, except for you people, who are per that your lives are perfect. But most other people have personal problems. <laughs> and I, then I thought I'd make him a teenager. Because there were no teenage superheroes that I knew of at the time. So armed with all that wonderful material, those great ideas, I ran into my publisher's office and I told him, this was my reaction, the reaction he gave me. Stan, that is the worst idea I have ever heard. <laughs> First of all, and he started to give me his, because he's a very logical man, very intellectual. First of all, people hate spiders, so you can't call a hero Spider-Man. You want him to be a teenager? Teenagers can only be sidekicks and you want him to have personal problems, Stan, don't you know what a superhero is? They don't have personal problems. Well, I left the office disappointed, but obviously a much wiser man. <laughs> and I couldn't get Spider-Man out of my system. So we were about to kill a magazine. I think it was called Amazing Fantasy. It wasn't selling well, and. We were sending the last issue to press. When you do the last issue of a magazine, nobody cares what you put in it because the book is dying. Just to get it out of my system, I put Spider-Man in Amazing Fantasy, featured him on the cover, forgot about it. A month later, all the sales figures came in. My publisher came racing into my office. Stan, Stan! You remember that character we both loved so much, Spider-Man? <laughs> he said, let's do him as a series. Now, why am I telling you this? Besides the fact that I have to kill a little time. <laughs> if you have an idea that you genuinely think is good, don't let some idiot talk you out of it. That doesn't mean that every wild notion you come up with is going to be genius. But if there is something that you feel is good, something you want to do, something that means something to you, try to do it. Because I think you can only do your best work if you're doing what you want to do and if you're doing it the way you think it should be done. And if you can take pride in it after you've done it, no matter what it is, if you can look at it and say, I did that, and I think it's pretty damn good. That's a great feeling. So don't let idiots <laughs> talk you out of something that you think is good.